um, his degrees, his research papers, his achievements, his patience, his humanitarian work. All of this makes a nice big booklet. And if I was to read it out to you, I think I'll spend the whole day reading it out. So here's just a small little gist that I'm going to give you. The, uh, Mr. Raja has already shared the important ones with, the, uh, with all of us uh, in our emails. Uh, so in brief, we have here an amazing doctor who has vowed to eradicate blindness in, from our country. And all the best in that. A doctor who has surpassed his illustrious father, Dr. K. Rajan, and even more illustrious, his mentor and guru, Dr. Badrinath of Shankar Netralia. You know, back in the 80s, we used to refer to his, we used to call it his clinic, uh, the Mohan I Care, Rajan I Care Clinic, and we've all been his patients at some point or the other. But today, if you have a look at the structure, I mean, it's a, it's a miracle the way it stands tall there. Doctor and his hospital has performed almost 1,50,000 cataract surgeries. Can you beat it? 1,50,000 cataract surgeries. And the majority of them is for the poor and the needy. That's the best part of it. A doctor who has established the Chennai Vision Trust, and it has performed more than 8,000 corneal transplant and all free of cost. A doctor who has taken the best eye care to every nook and corner of Tamil Nadu. And I think even to some parts of Andhra Pradesh. The hospital has an amazing Netra, Netra Vahana. Uh, we've shown you that photograph earlier for this project. A doctor who has a large number of volunteers who have pledged their eyes to his eye bank. Incidentally, I'm proud to say I'm one of those who pledged my eye and my children too have pledged their eyes. I've seen in person how when he, they remove the eyes from the, um, from the dead of one of my relatives, how it transformed the life of two people. I could go on and on and on, but I'm sure all of you would rather listen to Dr. Mohan Rajan than me. So over to you, doctor. And thank you for making time for us. I know how very, very, very busy you are. Thank you once, once again. And once again, a big welcome to Atashree. Next time in person, doctor. Thank, thank you. you. Can I share my screen, Rama? Yes, sir. You able to see my screen? Uh, I think we lost the screen. No. Not able to see my screen? No. I'll do it again, sir. Sorry. No, no. No worries. How about now? Uh, yeah, it's a blank screen at this point, but yes. Can you see our logo? Uh, no, it's totally blank. No? No, sorry. <laughs> How come I'm able to see this? Sorry about that, sir. No, 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 no. These are tricky things. I'm sharing my screen and then I'm going here and then. Uh, are you sharing the right uh, window? Because it's seeming like a whiteboard, the cursor is moving. See now, sir? No, no, it's just a cursor that is moving on the screen. You're not able to see the screen? Uh, well, I'm, I'm seeing a blank canvas. So I'm seeing a screen. It, it may not be the screen you have in mind. And it does say that I'm viewing Mohan Rajan's screen. 
So something. Here. Yeah, you might be uh, clicking on the wrong window. I'm sharing. I know I'm doing that. It almost seems like you're, you get you're going to a whiteboard. Yeah, I think the whiteboard only is coming. I don't know why. Yeah. So. Uh, No, oh, I'm very sorry. No, 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 no. But I checked it just recently. Now, about a few minutes back, it came. Let me, just give me one minute time, sir. No problem. No problem. I don't know why the whiteboard is coming. I don't know, it never, uh, the whiteboard. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm I'm, sh I'm sure you're an expert on it, but they yeah, might. Yeah, this is a, this is the fourth webinar I'm doing today. I know. Uh, sometimes some some installations have a pull down menu, not all installations. And uh, I'm sharing my screen, and then well, the whiteboard is coming immediately. Then I'm going to my uh, uh, PowerPoint. Then I'm putting share. The whiteboard only is coming. Mm. Very unfortunate. How about now, sir? No, no, I'm sorry. It's only the whiteboard. Sundar, I'm not able to share the screen, Sundar. Right board on what the number. Where? Share screen, huh? See this? This is what number there. This is only they are able to see. Oh. This is something which never came before. This white board. You must have a default somewhere set up yeah. accidentally. Coaching. It's okay now? No. Uh, no, right, right now nothing. Nothing. Only the whiteboard is there. No, no, you're not sharing a screen at all. Yeah. No? Now we have it. Yeah. So there was some default set somewhere. Very yeah. please, sorry, sir. I'm very no, sorry. No, no, no. No, 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 not at all. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, we've lost lo lost the screen scanning. Oh, oh. Uh, back to whiteboard. What happened? I don't know. Keep it open. You should come here, le. Ah, well, one day. Should come here, no? Mm. Yeah, keep it long, la. Mm. Mm. Just the problem is that the time is long. The question is. Mm. Mother, one day.
big uh, technical glitch i would say uh, let me at the outset thank uh, rama narayan somi for the wonderful introduction i would say she has given something to me which uh, even i didn't know about it in my in my cv and uh, thank you rama because you have been a great supporter of our uh, family of our rajanai care and i know you are one of the best teachers of my institution my alma mater padma seshadri and of course uh, Rotary and Raja also has been the person instrumental in getting all of us here, and of course all the people who are of this Atashi excellent uh, 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 what do you call the retirement uh, group, as far as the, the this thing is concerned in Whitefield, Bangalore, and I've got very fond memories of visiting Whitefield and uh, uh, and uh, meeting the great uh, Sai Baba Ji at that time, and as you know. i'm going to talk to you about the aging eye the aging eye for the next few minutes i'm going to talk to you about what is going to happen what is likely to happen when you are above the age of 60 or 65 what is the problem of blindness in our country every 5 seconds one person in our world goes blind and a child goes blind every minute why are we bother about this blindness if you take the global blindness problem out of 100 million people 80 to 100 million people who are blind in the world approximately 20 to 25 million people are in india which means that every fifth blind person is an indian whether you should be proud of that fact or you should be saddened by that fact is a is a thing to point to ponder but what is the economic burden of blindness average number of working years lost due to adult blindness is about 10 years average number of blind children is about 8 years in our country and loss of 33 working years which means a blind child becomes a burden to the community burden to the family and burden to the government the government spends huge amounts of money on this i talked about this global blindness let's see how an eye works the eye is much i i would say million times faster and better than the highest configuration computer god has created this wonderful really a lovely what you call the gift of sight for us and it's a lovely organ and it's very it's always a mystery how the eye works as you know there's the front of the eye the eye works very much like a an analog camera we don't see this analog camera nowadays because everything is digital on the iphone or the as the or the or the android phone or whatever it is the structure of the eye you can see here the cornea then you have the lens then back of the eye is the retina then you have the optic nerve and <laughs> from the optic nerve it goes to the center of the brain which is called the occipital cortex the brain is the central government the eye is the state government from the eye the signals go to the back of the brain that is the central government the central government signals have to come back to the state government in proper format so that the patient is able to see what is the difference between an optician optometrist and ophthalmologist optician is one who dispenses the glasses an optometrist is the one who checks the power of your glasses an ophthalmologist is the guy who is going to see you from a to z as far as your eyes are concerned the reason why i am telling this to you is that many people go to an optical shop and change the glasses they may have an underlying glaucoma or retinal detachment or a diaptic retinopathy they may completely miss it an optometrist is qualified only to check the power of your glasses whereas an ophthalmologist is the one who sees you from a to z as far as eyes are concerned so always it's better to visit an ophthalmologist than an optician and optometrist and that is what the take home message i want to give you all the normal eye the light signals the light <coughs> rays pass through the cornea and pass through the lens to the center of the retina which is called the fovea and then from the fovea that is the center of the retina it's called the macular area which is and center of the macula is called the fovea fovea it goes through the optic nerve to the back of the brain as i told you the central nervous system or the occipital cortex if you have a cornea problem that is the cornea opacity and it blocks the light i can see here 
For example, the cornea, the cornea is normally a transparent structure. I'm going to talk about the corneal blindness a little later and the, it blocks the light and the patient is not able to see. And this is a very, very common problem in our country. If you take people with blindness, about 50 to 60% will have this, that is called the cataract. I'm sure everybody, many of you have undergone cataract surgery or in the process of developing cataract and going undergoing surgery in the future as well. What happens in cataract? The cataract is nothing <clears throat> but the normal lens, which is a crystalline lens, which is like a mirror, transparent in the younger age group. As the age progresses, just like graying of the hair, the cataract, the lens becomes opaque and becomes what you call, uh, the, that is called the cataract. The cataract is nothing but a waterfall. It is uh, it's called in Greek and uh, as if the patient says, as if I'm seeing through a waterfall, this cataract blocks the vision and the patient is not able to see well. And what happens is the, the, the cataracts were, they can be removed and can, can be replaced with an intraocular lens, which can be either a monofocal lens or a multifocal lens, which I'll also talk about. As you know, the field of ophthalmology has made rapid strides in the past 10 to 20 years, especially in lasers and cataract surgery. And the curable blindness. <clears throat> curable blindness means all these are curable blindness in the sense that where a simple modality of treatment, which is not very costly, all these blindness can be completely eradicated, completely reversed, and to a certain extent, completely avoided as well. For example, the corneal blindness, the short sight and long sight, which is normally in the younger age group, eye injuries, again, younger age group, and the diaptic retinopathy, glaucoma, which is eye pressure, and of course, the cataract, which is the most common, as I told you. Cataract, if you say, 70 to 80 percent of the blindness, corneal blindness, 10 to 20 percent, refractory errors like short sight and long sight, that is minus power and plus power, then diaptic eye disease, which is called the diaptic retinopathy, which is growing in leaps and bounds in our country, glaucoma, which is again becoming a very major problem in the country, macular degeneration because the longevity, the lifespan uh, uh, is becoming much more than the previous uh, the decade. So what has happened is, the lifespan is increased from 64 to almost 74 or 76 years. And that is the reason why macular degeneration also is becoming on the increase nowadays. Cataract, as you know, the 20 million people are suffering from cataract in our country. We need to do 5 million surgeries per year for the next 10 years. At present, about 2.5 to 3.5 million surgeries are being done. 60% of the blindness is between 30 and 64 years. This is an immature cataract wherein the patient will be able to see okay, but the patient says that normally the patient will have double vision or will have difficulty in, in driving, especially at nights, they'll have excess glare or they'll not be able to see clearly. The, or the contrast, the quality of vision goes down. In the case of a mature cataract, the patient will not be able to see anything. It is like a white reflex in the eye and these cataracts require surgery as early as possible. The advent of small incision or micro incision sutureless cataract surgery is actually a game changer as far as the cataract surgery is concerned. What we call as micro incisional phaco emulsification surgery. Advantages faster rehabilitation, faster recovery, lesser astigmatism as well. Advent of topical anesthesia, which means that we just put drops and do the entire surgery in phaco emulsification, wherein there is no injection, no stitch, no pad cataract surgery as well. So phaco emulsification is becoming a very, very major issue. And you can see here, and it's becoming a major uh, part of the uh, cataract surgery in our country. The entire cataract is being removed through a very small incision, which can be as small as 1.8 millimeter, or sometimes even 2.2 millimeter, 2.4 millimeter, and 2.8 millimeter. The whole thing is the cataract is cut into smaller things, smaller pieces, and aspirated, just like the vacuum cleaner, which is there in your house, and the vacuum cleaner aspirates the, the dust and similarly the, 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 the phaco emulsification probe which is there on the, on the right side on, the, on that uh, the same uh, act, actually aspirates, cuts the cataract, the instrument which is on the left my, on the left hand cuts the cataract into smaller pieces and this is followed by the uh, what we call the implantation of a foldable lens. You can see here the lens which goes inside and takes the position of the original cataract or the original lens and the folds and unfolds inside the like, inside the capsular bag and, and gives close to natural vision. Again, you can see this another patient wherein you can see that this is called the symphony lens, 
which gives uncorrected vision for patients with, after cataract surgery that is called the extended depth of vision that is without glasses they'll be able to see distance intermediate as well as near they'll be able to work on the computer they'll be able to read a newspaper they'll be able to see the tv or drive a car without any glasses and that is the advantage of lenses like symphony lenses or the trifocal lenses as i see the newer thing which is happening in cataract surgery is everything is robotic <clears throat> the normal cataract surgery is called the manual cataract surgery a manual phaco emulsification wherein i do with the hand in robotic i do everything with the computer the advantage of the robotic surgery is that the computer works better than your human hand safety is there precision is there speed accuracy and of course it's a bladeless technology and this just to show you the robotic cataract surgery you can see a brown cataract which is very very common scenario in a country like a tropical country like india you can see here the whole thing is cut by the robotic laser system which is called the femto laser and the, the whole thing, cataract is cut into smaller pieces and then the uh, the phaco emulsification probe removes the cataract and it's followed by implantation of a lens which is can be seen then we come to glaucoma what is this glaucoma glaucoma is a condition wherein the eye pressure goes up please understand many people think whether the glaucoma is related to your hypertension this is not related to your hypertension at all the hypertension is totally different the glaucoma is totally different the glaucoma is an independent entity which is called the intraocular pressure or iop and the iop goes up inside the eye as you know the eyeball is a closed space it can impinge or give pressure on the optic nerve and the patient can start losing the vision so 60 million people are worldwide affected by glaucoma second most common cause of blindness in the world 7.5 million blind due to glaucoma in our country prevalence based study in glaucoma there are two types of glaucoma which is called the open angle glaucoma or the angle closure glaucoma the secondary glaucoma which is not uh, uh, very common so this is a normal optic disc you can see on the left side which is like a pink okay on the right side you can see a optic nerve which is affected by the glaucoma which has become completely white because of the increase intraocular pressure affecting the blood supply to the optic nerve and because of that all the blood vessels are being completely lost and it is called glaucomatous optic atrophy what happens in glaucoma in the normal optic disc and the glaucomatous optic disc we have different wasting in an open angle glaucoma the patient will not be able to see unless uh, will not be able to detect it unless they go to an ophthalmologist more importantly they have family history of glaucoma if your father and mother or uncle or your brothers have glaucoma it's more important that you go to an ophthalmologist and have a checkup in early glaucoma you will not be able to see anything because only the side vision will be lost in glaucoma gradually the side vision the peripheral vision will start closing up and that is the time when we when you come when you, when it closes up comes to the center and that is the time when many patients come to us and that is a very unfortunate situation because glaucoma whatever field of vision is gone is gone forever so we have very beautiful technologies nowadays available the automated field analyzer and uh, newer anti glaucoma medication is available and we have uh, normal tension glaucoma which is also which is uh, uh, the uh, field analyzer you can see what happens in glaucoma in a normal field of vision this is a normal person with a field of vision wherein if you see the center you can see the sides as well that is called the normal field of vision in patients with early glaucoma the peripheral vision that is the, the peripheral vision is lost unfortunately many patients don't realize at this stage unless they come to a ophthalmologist regularly and check up but in advanced glaucoma it's like a tubular vision just like a long tunnel so tunnel vision it's called tunnel vision and that is the stage wherein they go missing if you come at this stage you will be able to diagnose that is the stage 1 uh, or the early stage will be able to diagnose we got technology by which you can diagnose whether you got glaucoma and prevent the glaucoma from going to the next stage and even the advanced stages for that matter because this glaucoma can be easily controlled by means of newer medication drops which are available to us there is one type of glaucoma which is very common in south india which is called the angle closure glaucoma in this angle closure glaucoma which again can run in the family all of a sudden the patient can develop suddenly pain redness in the eye headache and vomiting and they can land up with a physician or a neurologist and this type of glaucoma is not uncommon and this type of glaucoma can be completely diagnosed on a routine examination when you come 
to an ophthalmologist. If you go to an optician or an optometrist, they will not be able to diagnose this because this glaucoma is absolutely asymptomatic before that. Okay, this glaucoma can be completely reversed by means of a simple laser called YAG laser hydrotomy, wherein we can just open up and pr produce that uh, the narrow angles can be widened by means of a simple outpatient treatment, and this can be, glaucoma can be completely reversed. This is the type of glaucoma which is completely treatable, whereas open angle glaucoma is something which you need to also treat, but also important that you have to come very early before we start treating these patients. So the, as far as the glaucoma is concerned, we have beautiful, very nice, effective eye drops. And these eye drops, about 10, 15 years back, they're available only in the, uh, what do you call, overseas market. But nowadays, all the Indian companies are also making these anti-glaucoma drops. You need to use, just like you use your medicines for the insulin for your diabetes or your uh, the BP medication. Similarly, the eye drops have to be put every day lifelong for patients who have got glaucoma, open angle glaucoma. The lasers can also be done for open angle as well as the narrow angle, as I told you, or the closed angle glaucoma. The laser is the treatment of choice. And of course, you have advanced glaucoma, then you have to do surgeries wherein the pressures are not under control. Please understand the normal pressures in the eye is between 12 and 20 millimeters of mercury. If it goes beyond 20 millimeters of mercury, if it is around... <laughs> 25 or 30 millimeters of mercury, then it starts affecting the optic nerve. If it's there for a longer time, more possibility of the optic nerve getting affected. And that is where the glaucoma is a blinding disease. So diabetes is again a very major problem in our country. 70 million people are uh, now having diabetes in our country, which is going to become 120 million in 2025. India is already the largest producer of cataracts in the world, largest producer of children with blindness in the world. It is going to become the diabetic capital of the world. What is important as far as eyes are concerned, the 20% of these diabetics can develop a condition in the eye which is called diabetic retinopathy. And please understand that 25 times greater risk of going blind compared to the general population. And diabetes has become very common, 13% to 15% in urban areas, and as much as even about 7 or 8% in the rural areas is the prevalence or almost 10% they are reported in the rural areas also. So the prevalence in the urban as well as rural areas are becoming more and more because of the stress, tension and also the changing food habits, changing lifestyle habits and all, all these are, uh, are, are important causes of diabetes. And again, please understand people who have got diabetes more than 5 years they are likely to develop a condition in the eye which is called diabetic retinopathy. This diabetic retinopathy is nothing but a problem in the back of the eye which is called the retina as I told you. Retina is like the layer which is there, the film on the back of the uh, camera. So the retina is a condition where is a, is a tissue which can be affected by diabetic retinopathy which is, can, can, be, can be affected by diabetes and there are four stages. That is the Stage 1, 2, 3, and 4, background, pre proliferative uh, advanced diabetic eye disease. Until the stage 3, the patient may not know that he is having diabetic retinopathy. As soon as you are diagnosed to have diabetes, please land up the very next day with an ophthalmologist, have your eyes dilated, and have it checked up for diabetes, diabetic retinopathy. Because you can have a problem in the retina like this, hemorrhages in the retina, or fluid accumulation in the retina, and all these can produce problems in the uh, this thing. Again, hard exudates. You can see here this is a different thing wherein uh, different stages of diabetic retinopathy. This is a stage three diabetic retinopathy. He came to me for a routine examination, and he was diagnosed to have diabetes about five six years back. He didn't have an eye checkup. But you can see that is a stage three diabetic retinopathy wherein the blood vessels are leaking all over the place. And that is, you can see this is a, another patient who had dropped in the vision, uh, advanced diabetic retinopathy. In stage four diabetic retinopathy, that is the time wherein you need to intervene because that is the time we need to do surgery called vitrectomy. The retina gets starts getting detached and that's called the traction retinal detachment. And this is a stage four diabetic retinopathy. Unfortunately, in our condition, in our country, many people land up with the stage 4 diabetic retinopathy. So the laser photocoagulation, you can have different types of laser, diode laser, green laser, 
I think which is beyond the scope of this thing. And fluorescent angiogram is something which we do for diaptic retinopathy, wherein we give a dye and take serial photographs of the retina. I'm sure many of you in, the, in this audience are also diaptics. You need to have your eye checkup done on a regular basis, every six months or a year with an ophthalmologist, even if you don't have problems with the vision. So this is a yellow laser for retinal problems. You can see here for all this and laser for the diaptic retinopathy, and of course, in advanced stage four diaptic retinopathy, then we need to do a surgery called vitrectomy, wherein we go inside, make small holes into the eye, and go inside and delve. Uh, and uh, uh, you can see here we are making something small holes into the eye, which is all completely sutureless, and remove the bleeding from inside. The bleeding is called vitreous hemorrhage, which is that inside the cavity, inside the eye, and you can see uh, I'm doing something. Uh, very advanced, uh, sophisticated surgery, which is called vitrectomy, and going inside the eye and removing the bleeding from inside the eye and attaching the retina as well. So all these are very, very sophisticated techniques, but we can prevent this blindness to the diabetic retinopathy just by uh, a, a simple awareness. Once you have a diabetic retinopathy, have a checkup with an ophthalmologist, you can see this is a detached retina. I'm going inside and trying to attach the retina and doing all this. All this uh, the, the advanced surgery. So diabetic retinopathy treatment, we have injections. Now we have multiple, we can give anti-VEGF injections. Anti-VEGF means vascular endothelial growth factors, which uh, take care of the macular edema that is fluid in the center of the retina. We can also give steroids into the eye. We can also do different types of lasers, as I told you, and surgery for advanced diabetic retinopathy. The take-home message as far as diabetic patients are concerned, strict control of diabetes. Please understand your Duration of diabetes is very important. Your HbA1c is very important between 6 and 7 because the HbA1c gives you a 3-month control and always early referral to an ophthalmologist, regular eye checkup. Monitor other systemic parameters because other systemic parameters like hypertension, kidney functions, your cholesterol, triglycerides levels, or your anemia, all these, if it's not controlled, can aggravate the diabetic retinopathy. So simple control of diabetes is also not only important, but also the associated factors are also important. As we age, the vessels, the blood vessels, just like any other blood vessels in the body, also undergo changes. The retinal blood vessels can also undergo changes. You can have a, a, something like a stroke in the eye, which is a stroke similar to the stroke in the brain or stroke in the heart, which is called the central retinal vein occlusion. Or you can have a sudden occlusion of the main blood vessel, which is a central retinal artery occlusion which can have a sudden drop in the vision. Or you can have only a branch, one of the branches of the uh, retinal blood vessels, again with aging, because of diabetes, because of hypertension, because of atherosclerosis, because of cholesterol dyslipidemia, and uh, so many other factors which are coming into age because of microangiopathy, which occurs with the age, and all these can produce a condition called a PRBO. Again, when there is a hypertension, especially in the night, please don't don't take your anti in the night. If you take your anti in the night, you can end up in a problem like an anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, wherein the blood supply to the optic nerve can get cut and you can have a drop in the vision when you get up early in the morning. Again, center of the retina, which is called, as I told you, is called the macular area, and the macular area undergoes changes similar to the graying of the hair. You can see, see these yellow spots in the center of the retina which are called the drusen, and this is called the macular degeneration. In Tamil Nadu, over 6 lakh people are affected by macular degeneration. The incidence is increasing day after day because, as I told you, the lifespan is also increasing. The lifespan, which is about 64 years, of about uh, 10 years, 20 years back, now it's become 74 years, and that is the reason why macular degeneration is also increasing. In macular degeneration, what happens is, Whatever happens in macular degeneration, there are two types of macular degeneration. One is a dry type, which normally doesn't affect the vision. In the wet type of macular degeneration, there's an abnormal blood vessel starts growing underneath the retina, which starts bleeding. That is the macular, that is a wet type, which is very, very dangerous, can be a blinding disease. In a normal person, the, the macular degeneration affects the field of vision just the opposite of glaucoma. Now, glaucoma, as I told you, the peripheral vision starts coming down. Macular degeneration is the central vision which goes off first. You can see here, this is a normal person which sees when the, when the macula is healthy. In a patient who's got a wet macular degeneration, wherein the bleeding in the center of the retina, 
you'll be able to see, you'll be able to tell you that I'm not, I'm able to see your face, but I'm not able to see your nose, but I'm able to see your ears very clearly. There is a central scotoma or a central dark spot. The central vision is completely affected in macular degeneration. There are different ways by which you can diagnose this macular degeneration. One is a clinical test, another is the OCT, optical coherence tomography, which is like a non-invasive biopsy or a fundus fluorus in angiography or endocyanin clean. This is the dry macular degeneration. If the dry macular degeneration, you can see spots in the retina. And if the dry, this normally does not affect the vision. As I told you, this macular degeneration is just like similar to the graying of the hair when the retinal cells undergo degeneration. And 90% of the people with will develop uh, over a period of time, uh, we will develop, develop atrophic or dry macular degeneration. Over a period of time, 10% of this dry macular degeneration can end up in a condition called wet macular degeneration, as I told you. This wet macular degeneration is very dangerous because the center of the retina is affected and bleeding can occur. Water can, uh, that is fluid can uh, form in the center of the retina and can drop the vision. You can see here how the wet macular degeneration, bleeding and also the fluid accumulation in the center of the retina. So we have the treatment, the dry AMD. We give high doses of antioxidants and zinc. Can reduce the vision loss from advanced AMD by about 90%. And uh, lutein and zeaxanthin, cocktail antioxidants like beta carotene, vitamin A, C, E, zinc, and selenium. Uh, we can also be added as a part of your routine antioxidant. Uh, as a vitamins, you can take this. Low vision aids can also be given for people to magnify the small letters. And these low vision weights can, can, can come in different forms. Uh, of course, we have got telescopic IOLs also. Of course, for the, uh, the wet macular degeneration, we can do what is called photodynamic therapy, which is a non-thermal laser. And of course, we can. the mainstay of the treatment nowadays is injection of uh, anti-VEGFs like Elucentis, Avastin or Ilea inside the eye on a regular basis. That is, every month, they have to get every four weeks they have to give, give this injection, sometimes the injections, we have to give three injections, six injections, nine injections. Sometimes some patients have even 36 or 40 injections or something like that. Of course, injuries are not uh, uh, very common in the older age group. Eye injuries, very common in the younger age group. 90% of the injuries are preventable. 40 to 45% are domestic injuries which occur at home. I, I just want to visit the housewives uh, more than 55, 60 years old. And these are pressure cooker injuries which have been reported and because of the improper management or the protocols followed by management or the uh, during the pressure cooker when the pressure cooker the uh, the uh, the protocols are not followed properly or the pressure cooker is not maintained properly the pressure cooker weight can hit the eye and produce problems in the retina just to show you that this uh, this is the old man who would try to pluck a drumstick from the uh, from the tree and the drumstick fell into the eye and pierced just like a missile and we had removed this drumstick, this is a burunka, which we removed from the eye. You can see here how we uh, sing and we got fairly 75 to 80 percent vision in this particular patient and this patient was operated long time back, about 13 years back by me and with, without any problem. I'm sure all of you are using computers. The computer population in India is 100 million or even more than that. Today, especially during the lockdown, I think more people are using computers. The computer vision syndrome is a very common problem. Ocular migraine, photophobia, changes in the color perception, dry eyes, blurred vision, refractive error, loss of focus, splitting headache, and all these can cause excessive watering red eyes. Only thing is, practice the 20-20-20 rule. Every 20 minutes, look at an object which is 20 feet away for about... 20 seconds and you can see the pencil push-ups can also be seen. This is the ideal way by which you can so, sit in front of the computer, the ideal distance, the ideal height, always have the monitor below the eye level. Corneal blindness, I'll be ending this uh, my talk with this. Corneal blindness is a very common problem in our country. As I told you, uh, India is the largest producer of children with blindness and many of the children are also affected and some of the older people are also affected by corneal blindness. 1.5 million people are blind in both eyes. As I told you, this, uh, this cornea is like the watch glass and 26% of the childhood blindness is due to the corneal disorders, the corneal opacity. As it, the cornea is a transparent structure. The cornea undergoes any infection or insult or injury. The cornea becomes white and becomes opaque. 
and blocks the light and the patient is not able to see light. It's just like the watch glass. The watch glass is damaged, you're not able to see the time. Similar to that, the corneal blindness can also do this. Corneal blindness can be uh, simply uh, managed by a simple surgery called corneal transplant, wherein we replace the cornea. This corneal transplant, this cornea is taken from the dead person. So after the death, always donate the eyes. A donation of the eyes is very, very important. You can see the preoperative, how this patient uh, uh, had a corneal problem. And after the surgery, the patient recovered fairly one vision, uh, good vision. Cornea only is transplanted, not the whole eye. One person's donation can give sight to two people. And through the Rotary Rajan Eye Bank, which is a rotary project of the Rotary District 3232, we have done almost close to about more than 7,000 corneal transplant surgeries absolutely free of cost. The process of the removal of the eyes will be carried out where the disease is. You can see absolutely there's no disfigurement or bleeding for the, from the dead body. The eyes are collected within four to six hours after death. The process of removal of the eyes takes only 20 minutes and the eyes are transported and grafted within 24 to 48 hours. And what is important is the eyes of the dead person should be closed, wet cotton and placed in the eye. Age no bar, caste no bar, sex no bar, anybody can donate the eyes. Even patients who are diabetic, patients who have undergone cataract surgery, patients who have got long sight, short sight or whatever it is, can uh, donate the eyes. Rotary Rajan Eye Bank was started in September 1996. We have done close to about 7,000 corneal transplants. Give the gift of sight, donate eyes. Do not burn them, do not bury them because there is life after death. If you go to pyramids and see, you will know exactly what is happening. We started just last week, the online eye donation. So you don't have to be physically present. The online eye donation wherein simply SMS I to this number, 92205-92205 and get your citation signed by our brand ambassador, Vijay Amitraj, as you know, is the ace tennis legend and also the UN ambassador of peace as well. As you know, <clears throat> we've got also several community projects as part of the Rajanai Care the Slum Vision Project, the Project Vizda for the different able people, the Retinopathy of Prematurity for the Newborn Infants, then the, uh, the, uh, the Cornea Project for the Children of Rural India for uh, the Childhood, uh, there is the Corneal Blindness, Tribal Vision Project, mainly focusing on Yelegri, Aircard, and the Pulikard Lake Tribals, Blind Free India Reality, wherein we have taken comprehensive eye care to the rural villages, about 150, 200 kilometers uh, 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 radius in and around Chennai. Netra Vahana, wherein we have taken tertiary eye care to about seven districts in Tamil Nadu and two districts in Andhra. Project Kanmani, focusing on childhood blindness, both in Tamil Nadu and Andhra, along with the government of Tamil Nadu. And of course, the COVID slum relief, which we are doing for this uh, as a part of the COVID uh, 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 relief, we are giving many of these uh, uh, slums in and around Chennai. The, we have also have a Blind Free India van, which is the van which is uh, equipped, supported by the Cognizant Foundation, the Vijay Amitraj Foundation. This is what Rama was talking about, which is called the Netra Vahana, which has got a tele ophthalmic unit. It's got different types of lasers. It is called the angiogram, the fundus camera. It's got an optical pharmacy, taking tertiary eye care to the rural doorstep for the first time ever in India, in our country. This is a van which is uh, not like an ordinary van, it's a well equipped van and it's equipment worth about three and a half crores in the inside the van. What are the eye care tips for the eye care for the uh, maintenance of very good uh, vision? Vitamin A rich diet, rich, uh, which is uh, uh, um, greens, carrots, green leafy vegetables, fish, and eggs. Regular annual checkup of eyes with ophthalmologists. Children of parents with eye problem. If the parents are wearing glasses, Please understand these children are also likely to wear, they are likely to have gla glasses. The parents have developed detachment of the retina. They are also likely to develop problems in the retina. The parents have got glaucoma. They are also likely to have glaucoma. The parents have got diabetic retinopathy. They also have likely to have diabetic retinopathy. So many of these conditions are familial. They are also genetic. Good control of diabetes and hypertension. Patients with family history of glaucoma, retinal detachment, and diabetic retinopathy also to have a regular checkup with an ophthalmologist who can get the same. Of course, diabetics, good glycemic control, blood pressure, renal functions, urine for microalbuminuria, proteinuria, creatinine, kidney functions are very, very important for the diabetic retinopathy. If you control the kidney function, the diabetic retinopathy also to be seen. If there's a worsening of the kidney function, the diabetic retinopathy can also be seen. Emphasis on regular follow-up 
with the treating of the molds regular follow up don't even if you don't have a problem every 6 months make it a point to go and to an ophthalmologist and have a checkup with the ophthalmologist thank you very much i am extremely sorry once again apologize for the delay and the technical glitch in sharing my screen thank you very much wonderful opportunity given to me by ramana aran sami raja sir and also the entire atashri group thank you doctor thank you very much indeed uh may i start off with one question which has come yes, yes sir in the chat box uh for a person with diabetic retinopathy does lower hemoglobin 11.5 constitute a risk of hemorrhage 11.5 is not a here lower hemoglobin sir 11.5 is not hemoglobin that is if you if you have anemia that is we are talking about anemia that is lower hemoglobin uh, what do you call uh, uh, this thing on the in the blood hemoglobin levels in the blood yes. if you have less than 7 or 8 or 9 then you have anemia okay mm -hmm. this anemia can worsen the diabetic retinopathy as i told you the the conditions which can worsen the diabetic retinopathy apart from your diabetes the poor control of diabetes is hypertension the kidney functions and uh, dyslipidemia that is the cholesterol and triglycerides anemia and if you are a smoker alcoholic and uh, all these can aggravate the diabetic retinopathy as well okay <clears throat> thank you thank you very much anyone else would like to ask a question can unmute himself or herself uh, please yes. dr rajan yeah i didn't yeah. quite understand uh, uh, what the the current state of uh, knowledge is as far as macular degeneration is concerned for the wet degeneration which is what i understand is the more uh, yes dangerous, dangerous. situation uh, do yes. these injections work uh, regularly or they are still under development mode no no it works regularly it's uh, fantastic before the advent of these injections which is about uh, 10 12 years back only the injections came into the market and uh, before the advent of the injection we used to do the lasers for these patients and the laser as you know is a destructive procedure the laser will destroy the central vision and only the peripheral vision will be there for these patients but with the advent of these injections like this anti vhfs with the lucentis the avastin and the and the ilia injections all these injections the only thing is we need to keep on repeating this injection because these injections work only for about 4 weeks and the wet macular degeneration completely reversed and also the vision also improves so no, the no. so that is the advantage of this uh, injections the no. injections are come they are all fda approved time tested trials are available lot of published articles are there lot of uh, what do you call uh, meta analysis is there and all these are available uh, um, and this injections is the main stay of treatment as far as wet macular degeneration is concerned today a couple of very quick follow ups uh, one is uh, have they are they still very expensive uh, have they started have, for example are they made in india now yeah it is made in india as well there is an injection called avastin which is not very expensive uh, the uh, uh, the injection is uh, costing less than about 5000 6000 rupees for every time you inject so uh, the there are injections like uh, the, uh, the there are many indian companies which are making the these injections are half the cost of the foreign companies okay and the second follow up very quickly if nobody else has um it, the, uh, the, on the other hand the dry uh, macular degeneration do i understand that that is not as dangerous not to worry about not it not as or? dangerous not as dangerous okay. only thing is over a period of time 10% of the dry can become wet okay and uh, that is what we have to be dry macular degeneration you can use the arrh2 formula that is age related eye disease disease which is contains lutein and zeaxanthin as i told you or you can have a cocktail antioxidants which i, I mentioned okay. that the combination of vitamin a c and e selenium and zinc which you can take regularly okay. to prevent the dry from becoming wet of course smoking and hypertension are two important risk factors as far as the wet macular degeneration is concerned so if you are a smoker please stop smoking because the dry can become wet if you are a hypertensive also there is a possibility the dry can become wet Uh, this robotic surgery that you mentioned yes sir has it become very popular now i mean is it uh, something which uh, is being yeah, done yeah. it has become very popular only thing is it's costly sir that is the problem why it's not been able to we are not able to penetrate the market so that is the advantage so that is the biggest uh, disadvantage i would say 
but the robotic surgery has got very very huge advantages for example i would say because my hand is very good but the robotic surgery the computer will not make a mistake at all every time if you want to make a opening on the lens which is about 5 mm uh, that is called the capsular excess consistently it will make that 4.9 or 5 mm the precision is so good and it cannot go wrong anywhere the robotic surgery so that is the advantage of the robotic surgery and that is why i think because once they bring the cost i think the machines cost will come down the companies will get the cost down once the cost comes on it will start penetrating the market like anything but it's got huge advantages okay thank you yeah. uh, this online donation of uh, yes. i said how does one go about it as a group very simple sir just sms i e y e okay 292205 nine double two zero five nine double two zero five that number yes. and yes. you will get a citation okay you can take a print out of the citation and keep it with you it is signed yes. by vijay mitraj okay yes. so you can keep the citation and keep it with you only thing is you need to make sure that you inform your kith and kin about yes. this online i donation that your yes. donated eyes it doesn't matter it that that, that uh, if you are staying in bangalore the nearest eye bank which is available uh, to uh, all of you is uh, will be will be considered so uh, Uh, the online eye donation is to just to propagate the message of eye donation to one and all so that the corneal blindness becomes part of history in this part of the world yes mm. yeah yes. because if you take yeah. if you take yeah. a country like sri lanka they yes. they they are the sri lanka much smaller country they are able to export they got surplus sight because every death in sri lanka by default is followed by eye donation because buddhism says unless you donate the eyes you cannot go to the uh, go, go to the heaven so yes. here no religion is against eye donation but lot of superstitions and religious yes. beliefs come in the way and yes. that is the reason why we are lagging behind a little yes i wanted to ask one more question now i'm i'm registered with you yes. but i live in bangalore so it's okay it it the, it's matter. okay where i yeah it doesn't okay. matter wherever you okay. are registered doesn't matter yeah Yeah, yeah. And uh, as you said, anyone can uh, donate, except if they have, of course, obviously HIV or or cancer, isn't it? Yes, yes. Did yes. mention very, cancer? Very, uh, very rampant cancer, uh, uh -huh. cancer which is spread to all parts of the body. It is called metastasis. And uh -huh. those types of cancer, uh, we don't normally take this uh, eyes. Uh, in the, we take this eyes, but we tell them that we cannot use it for the patients. We use it for research purposes. Okay. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cannot. we don't refuse any eyes for the matter even for patients who die of hiv or rabies which is dog bite we take this uh, eyes and tell the patient that we will not be able to use it for a patient but the only thing is we'll use it for the set purpose if you have no objections we'll take your eye if you have objections we will not take your eyes okay. that is what we we'll say yeah and if you are not registered i mean some of us not may necessary. not be able to registration is not necessary at all okay. registration is not necessary as on the same on the on the contrary even if you are registered suppose your son or your daughter says that we cannot take your eyes okay then we cannot take your eyes Please oh okay understand. okay so registration is the uh, the pledging is just to propagate the message of eye donation to one and all registration or the pledging is not necessary at all okay, okay. Uh, as long as your daughter or son or somebody your uh, close relatives are willing to donate the eyes for you Okay. Uh, I have one question. Yes. Yeah. Do we have to donate immediately after the day? Within four hours, madam. Ah. Four to six hours we have to take. So within four hours. Within four to six hours. Okay. So yes. we have to inform immediately. Immediately, madam. That is the reason why, because many people don't realize it. and they uh, come and tell me the next day oh i forgot about it because and after one day they talk to me and uh, tell me i want to donate dies normally no within 6 hours the cornea loses the viability that is a problem for transplantation so, uh, so that is the reason why we always tell them within 6 hours you try to say as soon as there is a death in your family when you are informing all your relatives and friends i know you are under lot of stress and tension but same time you have to understand that you should uh, uh, inform an eye bank if you are not able to get an eye bank number you get a, get hold of a nearest eye doctor or nearest any doctor for the your family doctor uh, will be able to guide you 
uh, where to donate it, how to donate it. So we have to find out in Bangalore, especially in Whiteville nearby, I have bank. Absolutely no problem at all. If you, uh, uh, yes, uh, I, can, I, can, I can send you the contact details of nearby yeah. bank. For example, Whitefield, there, are, there is a Shankara Eye Hospital is there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was there in, they got a fantastic eye bank there also. You can donate in that place also. Okay. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Any more questions? Um, I I have one question, uh, uh, Raja. Yes. Uh, please. For, sure. for doctor, you know there is this uh, cataract surgery. They often talk about the interocular lens. Yes. And they say they will offer a local lens versus an imported lens. Yes, sir. And very often doctors promote the imported lens. I would like to know your uh, opinion about what is the difference between these two. I hope there are no Indian ophthalmic industry guys here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> make this comment. No, I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> the Indian companies are Indian companies are very good. They are very good. Only thing is, uh, if you want me to choose between the Indian and the, uh, the imported ones. The imported ones are definitely far better. Okay. And this is a once in a lifetime. And uh, I would suggest that you go for an imported lens. Definitely. If the cost is a factor, the Indian lenses, definitely it's good. But the cost is not a factor. Okay. Definitely I would suggest that imported lenses because the technology is much better. Number one, they do much more R&D than the Indian company. Okay, the research and development which has gone into these technologies which are available to us in the form of uh, lenses from Alcon or j, &J or Bosch and Lomb or all these companies are really a Zeiss for that matter. All these companies are really fantastic. But Indian companies are coming up very fast. They're catching up. It'll, it may, Maybe another few years, maybe five, ten years down the line, uh, it will probably catch up with the uh, uh, with the uh, American companies as well, or the German companies. Thank, thank you, sir. Hope yeah. with the Make in India program of the Prime Minister, it happens faster. It is a much, for example, if you, um, if you take the Arabin group, they do, uh, they, yes. they have a very good lab, it's called Aero, Aero Lab, which yes. makes very good lenses, very good lenses, and uh, uh, they, are, they are also, in fact, they have done the largest number of the, uh, the cataract studies in the world, right. would say that That's organization. Right. So they were very happy with those lenses. So you thank you, cost, thank you very much. Sir. Thank if you. If it's not a factor, then go for the important ones. Thank you, sir. thank yes. you. Okay, any more questions? Well, thank you very much, doctor. Uh, in this kind of an online webinar, we cannot even give you symbolically a memento. <laughs> but maybe the least we can do is to pledge our eyes. Absolutely, sir. And do it online, which many of us would like to do, having heard you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Now, may I request uh, Brigadier Murthy to propose formally a vote of thanks? Brigadier, would you un unmute yourself? Can you hear me? Uh, Brigadier Murthy, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. I can hear you. Uh, can yeah, you please. hear me? Yeah, yeah, we Hello. can hear you. We can hear you. Can... Yes, we can hear you. Yes, sir. Oh, fine. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to propose a vote of thanks on this uh, wonderful opportunity we had, listening to one of the experts in the field with uh, so much qualifications and uh, more, more than qualification with so much of experience. practical on hand uh, experience. Uh, it's, a, it's a privilege for us to listen to you. The, the talk has been very illuminating, especially for uh, senior citizens like us, how we should look after our eyes with the, as age advances. And uh, also you have uh, very beautifully explained what precautions are to be taken, how, um, Every six months, we have to go in for a normal checkup. Uh, only one small question before I continue with my yes, proposal sir. of word of thanks. Uh, a normal uh, checkup with an ophthalmologist does, 
will he be able to uh, sort of find out whether we are suffering any of these uh, uh, age related diseases absolutely like glaucoma or uh, absolutely uh, if you go to an ophthalmologist no special... yes sir for a routine eye checkup when you go to for a routine eye checkup the ophthalmologist is the person who sees you from a to z okay they'll find out whether your cornea is good or you are having cataract whether you are having any glaucoma they dilate your eyes and find out whether you are having any diabetic retinopathy very any retinal holes are there any weak points in the retina are there all these can be done by a routine eye examination with an ophthalmologist on a regular basis very good thank you and uh, uh, i must also thank um, mr raja and uh, mr bharat for organizing the uh, this presentation which has been uh, even though there was a small glitch in the beginning and, and it went off so well and yeah. and, and uh, also and rama also of course who was instrumental in uh, bringing right. you to uh, address this yeah. this evening and uh, i also thank all the participants who came over and uh, those people who were not able to make it i request the administration if you can uh, circulate a, a recorded uh, video to all of us all the people who are not present here once again dr rajan thank you so much for spending so much time with us thanks a lot many thanks thank you, thank you, thank you much, once sir. again yeah. rajan sir thank you very much rama thank you very much Adha, many sir. thanks indeed Thank you, and may your hospital grow by the same number. I need you. I now. need all your blessings. Oh, We need yes. all your blessings. Thank you very much. Thank you. All our seniors will bless you hundredfold. <laughs> Thank you. So much. And all your family. <laughs> may your tribe increase. Thank you. Thank so you, Doctor, for sparing us the time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Wonderful. Once again, I apologize. Apologize for the. Not at all. Oh, not at not all. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. On that note. Shall we end yes. the meeting? Yes, sir. Thank you, yeah. sir. For thank you. Thank you. Thank you.